What's going on, everybody? Hope you are having a great one. It is officially my 10th video, and while that is not anything too super or spectacular, I figured we should celebrate this sort of special occasion with something shiny, and we're going to take a look at Bumblebee, the special gold edition. Ooh. Um, this figure is from 3.0, which I have absolutely been raving about lately. Um, I do have the standard version uh, right behind this one, um, so you can kind of compare the two. Uh, it is basically the exact same, just in a wonderful gold color. Uh, so if it's something you might be interested in, or if you're deciding on which of the two to get, uh, hopefully we can take a look at this guy, and that'll help you make up your mind. Now, 3-0 has absolutely been crushing things lately. If you aren't familiar with them, I highly recommend checking them out. Um, they have done phenomenal stuff with their Transformers, like we will see in a moment. Um, they've also got their G.I. Joe line, which has come out, uh, and so far, again, absolutely outstanding. Uh, in the anime world, they've got uh, Full Metal Alchemist figures, which are great, and I will be unboxing at some point in the near future. Um, and then they've also got the guts to do Berserk figures, pun intended. Um, so we'll be getting a guts down the road, which I am super excited for. Um, but really the big deal right now um, is this beautiful fella here. Uh, now, if you haven't gotten or seen any of these, uh, it is the DLX line. They are 24th scale. Uh, main reason I mention that um, is they make some other pretty cool 24th scale stuff that you can find uh, just at regular toy stores, Walmart, things of the like. Um, I recently got this little fella here for about 15 bucks, which will give me a nice 24th scale, scale Charlie. Um, and then Bumblebee in car form. Uh, you can get them for most of the vehicle versions of Transformers. So if you wanted a truck version of Optimus, he's out there. Um, you know, you can pretty much find the Camaro, the Volkswagen version of Bumblebee. A whole bunch of different ones. So that is something to kind of keep your eyes on if you want to spice up your display a little bit. Um, now on to this guy himself. Uh, it is the gold version of that figure right there. Um, now, if you aren't too familiar with the story, from what I recall, uh, once Goku kills Bumblebee, um, Spike and Bumblebee's other minions use the Dragon Balls to resurrect him, um, and when he comes back, he's kind of transcended his final form and is in this beautiful golden form here. Um, so I, I might have some of the details wrong on that. You can Google it. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes, but, you know, it might, might be wrong. Uh, now, this figure, uh, again, is absolutely outstanding. Um, I absolutely loved the standard one. Um, he is completely gorgeous. Uh, Bumblebee has been a longtime favorite character of mine, so I was definitely going to get the gold one as well, uh, to give you an idea just how much I love him. Uh, I have a yellow VW Beetle that I drive around for that reason. Uh, get that box out the way, get on to the cooler one. Um, now they do make quite a few other figures. I have got the Megatron uh, incoming. I'm probably going to just kind of stick with that. Uh, if they do make a classic Bumblebee, I will definitely pick it up. Uh, they have a mini DLX one coming, but I'm going to try and just stick with the size for all of them. Um, the box, before I yank it open and give it the old ludicrous treatment, uh, basically the exact same as the normal one, uh, just with a really cool gold shine to it. So, there. Uh, back up the... Kind of do this... There you have gold. There you have normal. And honestly, the front is pretty much the exact same. So there you got the gold one. And we'll just do a supply by with the normal. Now, interestingly, I just noticed the image is different. Uh, but it is still going to be the same. Uh, it's Bumblebee from the Bumblebee movie, so it'll be the same Beetle version. Uh, but I do like that they did a, an actual different Bumblebee picture for the cover. Uh, that's kind of fun. Alrighty. It does also have a window box like all 3-0 stuff does. I'm not going to bother opening it because we're going to see the figure in a moment. Um, but if you did want to leave them in a box to display, um, it is an easy way to go. Give us a nice pretty backdrop for now. 
Alrighty, so here's round one. We're just going to stand him upright. It should be pretty stable. Uh, Three Zero does an amazing job with their packaging. That's one thing that I am going to say right off the bat. Um, everything is sealed up really, really nicely. It's very well organized. You get a ton of stuff. They put it in separate compartments, so it makes it very easy to access. Um, and they don't use a ton of tape, which I appreciate. Uh, I, I shouldn't have problems with tape, but a lot of times I, I go to yank stuff off without realizing it's there and end up ripping things. Uh, don't really have that problem with these guys. That being said, it is a snug hidden cover. There we go. Get that on out of there. Pull out Mr. B himself. I'm just going to kind of tip this up a little to take a look at the accessories and such. Um, eh, we'll pull them out. Why we go halfway? He does, of course, uh, come with the alternate battle-ready head. As you can see there. Um, now, sadly, uh, much like this one, the eyes do end up being blue. Um, he doesn't come with batteries. I can put some in in a bit, but uh, I was hoping that the attack mode would be red-eyed. Um, now, if you get the really, uh, like, the super deluxe version that's, uh, you know, a much larger scale, um, also a much larger price tag, uh, that one does have the red eyes, uh, which I thought was a nice touch. kind of surprised it didn't come with them on this one, though. For him, ears up, so he will stay that way. And we're going to take a quick look at the different hands that he's got. Uh, the doors slash wings, I don't really think you need to see. They're honestly the same as the other one, but with the gold paint scheme, so you can kind of just figure out how those look. Uh, the hands are a little bit different, though, just because they have a darker paint scheme on them. Um, so, let's do this. Do some side by sides. Forgive me, B. I need to borrow that. All right. So standard on the left and gold on the right. Hopefully they will focus in. Okay. There we go. So I do apologize. The focus on that is terrible, um, but it's basically the same metal on the actual fingers and appendages and such. But the uh, the actual yellowing is just swapped out with gold there. Um, so that's going to be the only change on the actual hands, from what I can tell, which is fine. Um, to be honest, I thought the ones on the gold were darker. Uh, but when you put them right next to each other, they're really not. It almost looks like the gold has more weathering on them. So I'm not sure. That would basically probably be the main difference. So they do look a little more weathered and darker uh, in comparison but not by a whole lot. Um, definitely noticeable, especially if I can actually get it to focus. Maybe if I stop moving them so much. Let's just do this. Ta -da. So there you can kind of see the difference. That worked out better than I thought it would. See, so yeah, again, the fingers really aren't much different. There just seems to be some black kind of weathering on the uh, the gold version that the yellow one doesn't have, um, which is fine. Uh, I don't really mind that. The yellow one does have weathering on the yellow itself, so you get some kind of age and stuff in there. Uh, the head sculpt, I'm going to leave the two cute ones on, but to take an up-close look at these two, the battle ones, uh, again, basically the same thing. Um, now, I do like they did the... Uh, Transformer logo. Uh, the button is a different color. Um, also, it looks like the eyes on the gold one are almost a little brighter. Um, that might just be the lighting, but it looks like they used a almost like a, a clearer plastic where the one on the yellow might be a little bit darker tinted. 
Uh, but it definitely really looks nice, and I, I honestly think the the silver logo for the Transformer, the little Autobot logo there, that I think is a nice touch. I think that silver goes really, really good with the gold. Um, so it really kind of pops out a bit, um, which I honestly like. Not as noticeable on that guy, still cool, but that one's definitely pretty neat. Uh, now the blaster arm is pretty well done. I don't have the yellow one handy. I'm not going to dig it out, but it's basically going to be identical just with the yellow coloring instead of gold. Um, so really, you know, again, same thing there. Actual figure-wise, let's take a closer look at these guys. Um, so obviously this one's going to be a bit stiffer as far as moving around since he's fresh out the box, uh, but... Oh. There are some definite color differences, which we will take a gander at a moment. I am I feel bad seeing Bumblebee without a hand, so I'm giving him that back real quick. There we go. All right, so we'll just kind of pop you there. And I want you to stand up a little bit better, please. Thanks, sir. All right. So, side by side, um, you can definitely see that some of the non-gold metal is a lot brighter. Uh, definitely on the face, um, kind of the highlights around what would be like the, the front fenders uh, of the VW. Um, even the metal on his little footsies and such, a little bit brighter on the gold. Um, I think this one looks pretty darn cool. Um, I really am not displeased with it in any way. I think if you're a huge fan of Bumblebee, you're probably going to want to try and get one of these. Um, especially since it's a limited edition one. Uh, now, in all honesty, the, the main thing with these, Bumblebee traditionally, going back to like the 80s, has had solid gold variants. Um, so I think this is just a nice little homage to that. They do make a really cool Takara one uh, in gold as well that transforms, so if you prefer the transforming variety and you want a gold one, you can look for that. Um, they are pretty easy to get. Uh, but as far as the DLX line, I'm, I'm really pretty happy that they did that. Now, if you haven't seen the figure up close uh, before, we'll take a quick look through them just to kind of go over a bunch of different stuff. You can yank the head off. Um, and open the head to put in the battery box. I'll go over that in just a moment. There is an insane amount of articulation on this guy. Um, and one of the big things with this figure, and really all of their, the DLX ones, they actually come with very useful instructions. Um, there are a lot of contact points throughout the whole thing that if you're not careful when you're moving them around, they're going to just gradually rub up against each other and kind of wear down the paint. Um, wear down the joints, etc. And as you even just kind of move it, you might be able to hear like some of the clicking. A lot of that is just going to be from the actual parts kind of rubbing against each other. Um, most of these little panels you can move and wiggle and adjust. Um, and the actual instruction guide does give you some tips as far as which ones to move and how to move them when you're adjusting the figure to avoid uh, really hitting those bad contact spots. Um, big ones that you're going to want to watch out for that I've learned just from playing with the other one um, right in this area, specifically down at these legs, uh, those joints right in there. Um, not sure if you'll be able to see it too bad on this one, but definitely uh, right in that corner. Um, if I were to lift him up more and make him kick straight, there would be a ton of pressure on, on that little tubing there. Um, so you just really kind of want to twist it at an angle as you go. Um, that way you're not putting direct pressure on it. Now one of the other ones that I had an issue with, and they don't actually show in the instructions, is on the elbow here. Um, you can kind of see this little piece of plastic there and there. Oops. Right here. Um, so those little pegs, as they rotate, uh, depending on how you're bending them, really got to be careful. If it were lined up wrong, you know, I'm going to try and get a good angle, but in theory you could put a ton of stress on it. There we go. If I were not 
paying attention and just tried to bend the elbow, that little piece would probably snap right off. Um, it's pretty pliable, um, <laughs> but I would not want to test it. So just be very careful when you're bending the elbow joints. You always kind of want to make sure that those guys are not going to come into contact with anything as you're rotating it. And once you get it into position, you can, of course, turn basically every part of his arm to get it however you want. Um, that's kind of the good thing about this, these figures. But uh, just be careful on those initial moves. Um, now, a lot of the other stuff that you're going to notice that they've done that's really cool with this guy. Um, he's got moving pistons and stuff right in there. Uh, so as you close and open the joints, those are going to kind of interlock and give them really more, a lot more of a machining, uh, working machine kind of look to them. Um, also, it matches up with the movie quite well as far as the actual uh, look um, and design of them and, and sort of where everything lines up and matches. Uh, so they, they really did an outstanding job in kind of capturing the look of Bumblebee. Um, and definitely did an amazing job as far as the posability and the articulation of them. This series of figures is really quite outstanding. Uh, and if you are into Transformers at all, definitely worth getting one or two, especially uh, if they make any of your favorites. Um, fortunately for me, Bumblebee and Megatron already out of the way. Uh, if they do make a classic Bumblebee and uh, a larger version, I will definitely get them uh, just because I love them so much. Um, I don't need the Camaro one, <laughs> uh, but definitely would get an 80s version if he were to come out. Now, real quickly with the heads, um, I'm just going to show you on this one. It's kind of a pain to get the batteries in, because you only get one of these little battery cell things, and then you would move this from whichever head you're using. Oops into the other one. So theoretically, just pop this guy. Oh, I lied because this one's already got one in it. Boop, take that out. Did I not put them in right? Wouldn't be the first time, eh? Looks like those are in right. There we go. Ta-da! Button's a little harder to press than the, uh, the yellow one. Not the end of the world. Oops. Also, that's kind of fun. I didn't notice it, but uh, I'll just activate it that way. Hey, cool. All right. I guess I don't really need to pop that back in for now. It's good enough. We can deal with that later. Um, so that's pretty much going to do it for now. I uh, definitely wanted to thank everybody for watching. Um, now, if you are considering getting either of these, uh, this guy is limited edition to 1500 uh, So there's not a ton of them available. You can get them from Sideshow Collectibles. Uh, so definitely go ahead and, and get that ordered if you want before they sell out and you're gone for good. Um, this guy will be around.